All right. Hi, everybody. I think we'll go ahead and get started. Thank you for joining us on day two of the uh, 32nd annual FIRST conference. Uh, just before we get started, a couple of quick reminders. Uh, you all are on mute. Um, if you're using the event app, we encourage you to check into the sessions, update your activities, and please be sure to complete the session surveys. Um, if you are having any trouble with the app, please email us at events at first.org. We're happy to help. The session is TLP white and is being recorded. Recordings will be available within 24 hours via the app or the desktop mobile site. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to your session moderator today, Alexander Yeager. Hey, Alex. Hi, everyone. This is Alex, and I will be moderating this session today. Uh, just one item before we get started. Uh, we asked to submit your questions using the Q&I uh, functionality. The questions in this session will be answered during the talk. And with that, let's go ahead and get started. Attackers need a place to host their stuff. They usually want to do it on hosters that do not give them a hard time. In today's talk, we can go down this rabbit hole guided by Vladimir and Fyodor, who are both researchers at Trend Micro FTR team and are regular speakers at well-known conferences. So please join me welcoming both. Uh, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yes. Great. So greetings to everyone. And uh, today we're presenting results of underground hosting research, in particular scope is what makes a successful criminal host hoster. This session is going to be delivered by me, Vladimir Kropotov. And me, Fedor Yarochkin. I will mostly lead the talk and Fedor will answer your questions. So let's get started with introduction of basic terms. We define underground hosting as any service to host components of infrastructure with a goal of conducting malicious or criminal activity. This is a very broad definition, but it also allows us to examine wide range of underground activities involved in provision infrastructures components to criminals. Such services can include uh, hosting on dedicated servers, hosting on compromised assets, VPS, fast flux infrastructures, and anonymization services like proxies. So who are successful underground hosters? On our opinion, with the people or groups who are able to operate over a long period of time. Many of such hosters like Yelishanda has been discussed publicly or by Brian Krebs and many other journalists. And many hours are still well known like Brazers and we will discuss them a bit later. So what was services with BPH or bulletproof hosting tend to provide? Of course, dedicated hosting solutions and virtual hosting solutions. Fast flux, service protection and anonymization, especially service protection is it's an interesting part of bulletproof infrastructures, additional infrastructure provision and much more. So let's see. So actually, if you look into bulletproof hosters, we often have lists of acceptable and non-permitted services. And uh, these lists are almost always present in bulletproof advertisement, where often SLAs, which include additional parameters like time from purchasing service to service delivery or warranty of the service. In some cases, warranty can measure it just, for example, four hours or 12 hours. In other cases, criminals able to provide way more reliable infrastructure. And actually reputation is one of the important things on the underground and on the cases and services related to 
underground or bulletproof hosting. Sometimes it is possible to spot feedback to the hosting when customers remember all times when hosting was advertised on the underground forums. And despite now this is a white business, uh, some customers still pointing out that it was uh, a business in gray or black or dangerous underground areas before. What we actually believe that there are no ultimate bulletproof hosting or service that exists very long time without any restrictions on the content which is hosted. Many of a major project try to create BPH hosting, which can accept all types of the content, but what we see, we are often shutting down or law enforcement just uh, raided your locations. BPH are successful because we're able to carefully select what kind of customers we are work with often live in public space and criminal forums altogether. And we are extremely picky about type of the content which we host and in which location. Many BPH hosting start your business from dedicated forums, but now we see several places where the deals are going on and where buyers and sellers interact because business evolve. So we can see underground forums, dedicated shops, messenger, and even social media platforms. So this is an example of the advertisement of bulletproof hosting at Russian social media network VK, which is known like Russian version of the Facebook. And nobody hide here. We just uh, advertise bulletproof service, which is suitable for mass scan and, and map and many other activities. Many hostels grow and start having very solid, often government customers, but we are sometimes still supporting uh, their old customers. And sometimes it's pretty visible uh, if you look how particular autonomous system is connected with ours. So here we can see, for example, uh, Zormo BV, which is described it as a high risk ISP. And uh, what we figured out when we visited uh, this ISP page we advertise what we provide services, not just for legitimate customers, but we have experience to host website of government agencies. And at the same time on the forums, we can see advertisement of bulletproof hosting for Hive from the same ISP. Uh, what we witnessed in our research but not just hosting services are important, but for example, DDoS protection part is really important because criminals are often compete with each other. And that means that we can order, for example, DDoS attacks on competitor underground forums. And we can see advertisement of DDoS protection services at the underground. And another important thing, kind of capture which protects assets like forums from scraping and from appearance of non-native speakers. On the right side, you can see several examples for the capture and don't be surprised. It's not the capture where people have to recognize a picture of the train or plane or boat because criminals are able to solve these captures with their services, which are generally have AI or real humans on the back end. So, and we come out with our version of capture 
where people have to recognize uh, questions or, uh, to show their skills uh, in IT industry. So how to handle, for example, uh, Unix uh, or administer Unix systems, calculate mathematical equations or know some culture related things. So for example, how many Dalmatians are in the name of well-known cartoon. So many people can answer all over the world. But if you look into the last question, how many codes are known? Uh, and the original question, which was translated like how many codes are known in, in the well-known song, uh, non-native speakers are unable to reply these kind of questions. Or this kind of question, like what is the, the article of Russian criminal code related to fraud. So infrastructure protections, protection services, it's a part of underground hosting services and it's barely mentioned uh, by journalists somehow. Social and networks we already discussed, but media networks, it's another media not media, but uh, messenger networks like Telegram are very popular among criminals to advertise the services. And here we can see advertisement of service, which is more than 10 years old. And actually, not just uh, advertisements are available on the platforms. So bots on Telegram are widely used uh, as, as shops to sell underground hosting. In these bots, uh, you can see advertisement of credentials just to show the credibility. And uh, it is possible to choose many services like RDP access or VPS or other services and to make a purchase is just necessary to send the money on particular e-wallet with particular comment. So let's think what successful infrastructure or what makes successful bulletproof hoster. Where several angles of this, so economical ecosystem, it means uh, the hosting should be profitable because majority of criminal market compared to market related to advanced persistent threats, it's about monetization. So we would like to highlight several trends which we're witnessing now on the underground. So first trend is a trend which called cloud of logs. So it's a business model when criminals not using logs from just particular stealer or malware, but they combining with logs from many sources into the cloud and selling access to the cloud, which contains terabytes of data, data from hundreds, thousands of hosts. And this data categorized by geographical location, by type of the credentials. So it could be stolen credit cards with cookies, it could be PayPal accounts, but there are many very interesting things related to hosting. We could be compromised hosts with RDP or HVNC access. And more interesting things, it's access to corporate consoles of well-known cloud service providers. The criminals can provision uh, their own VMs inside the criminal infrastructure. And of course, this really changed the threat landscapes for big companies because criminals are able to monetize compromised assets way faster and more effective because expert in monetizing, for example, RDP access will exfiltrate data from the cloud which related to RDP and monetizes. Criminals who are able to monetize finan financial access will monetize credit cards or PayPal account and so on. And we're expert in this. So this really cut off the time of reaction for the breaches for corporations. And of course, criminals uh, using tools to automate their jobs. 
on the right side, you can see an advertisement from underground forum, which is gift banner, which shows a functionality of the tool called RDP multi-tool, where many credentials can be processed at the same time and the customer or buyer can perform many actions simultaneously on many assets. And as we see on the recent interview from Revel, Revel, RDP is one of the most vulnerabilities uh, which is used to enter infrastructure. So let's see some examples, like how we decided to structure the services and why the services are successful in bulletproof hosting. So we categorize uh, hosting assets in three types. It's hosting on stolen and compromised assets, hosting with short-term lease, where legitimate ISPs are used to host assets and own data centers. And on the right side, we can see a cost of the service, which is growth from hosting on compromised assets to own data centers. So why hosting on compromised assets is abuse resistant? Because criminals have very big pool of compromised assets and uh, the services which are running on those hosts like scanning, brute force attacks, spam campaigns or proxies expected to share, have very short detail, very lot, uh, short lifespan what means that criminals already done what we want before abuse arrived. For the short-term lease services, when criminals rent legitimate uh, data centers or wrecks in legitimate data centers, what means what we use particular SLAs that are really adjusted with geographical locations. So for example, something which is permitted in Netherlands will be never permitted in uh, Arabic country, but since it's permitted in Netherlands, it, it could be hosted where. So it's abuse of SLA services. And of course, uh, dedicated infrastructure, because we see a cases when criminals manage to build own data centers in the basements of their own private buildings. So you can see on the right side uh, a screenshot from the video from Ukrainian security service, which rated one of such hosting in-house hostings. And you can see four racks of servers in the private house. So, and normally this kind of hostings abuse uh, conflict of interest between the countries or use locations which are near conflict zones or local conflict zones. So several examples where we can spot uh, as different strategies. In this case, on the advertisement, we can see 48 warranty for dedicated host. And another thing, the warranty is not valid if the owner of the infrastructure changes the password. What means uh, what it's compromised asset. Of course, Seychelles is not a fancy beaches. Some companies are registered in, play, in offshore places like Seychelles, while keeping IP pools in other countries like Russia, Ukraine, or Romania. And this raises really complex cross-jurisdictional issues because law enforcement from many countries should collaborate to take down these infrastructures. And of course, example of abuse of SLAs where people provide particular locations in the countries like Russia, Ukraine, Moldova, or Netherlands, or Malaysia, because every of these countries are suitable to host particular content which hosted by criminals. Another short note, actually, uh, 
what happened if country have uh, enforcement of the rules? So for example, in Russia, Roscommonadzor can block country uh, content in the country wide uh, scale based on the court decision. So what means that content will be blocked in Russia, but it's, if it's still hosted in Russia, no, like normal Russian customers are unable to access the content. But uh, Roscommonadzor doesn't block external connections. So this content will be available for our countries and criminals who target in our countries are able to host some infrastructure in Russia. So to summarize that, we build a pretty big table, which so based on the criminal actor's opinion, what are the countries which, which are used to host particular content like spam, phishing, political content, or copyright materials. And you can see three letters here. Y means criminals prefer this location. M means maybe, what means some criminals succeed to host on this location. And uh, N is where negative comments, uh, negative uh, feedback from criminals uh, when we try to host in this particular locations. So another example of successful hosting is a fast flux. So fast flux before was mostly on bots or on compromised infrastructures. And now we can see a tendency when criminals renting assets from legitimate ISPs and we're using pretty big pools to move assets around. So for example, here we can see an advertisement from Brazers, which are offered to host content on fast flux, and we are able to provision infrastructure in 15 minutes. So how to spot fast flux? Actually, some of the indicators are visible in DNS records. So some timeouts are way shortly, shortly when default value, for example, a refresh timeout could be just several minutes. And uh, but often a sign of fast looks, but sometimes uh, legitimate big websites using the same strategy for load balancing. And uh, here is a feedback from criminal actors, which ISPs uh, are suitable to host content with some SLA restrictions. So what, what's how we see uh, IS, legitimate ISP providers uh, to, uh, for short term lease. So let's move to some case studies. So first case study is a fast flux. We made several case studies based on the underground forum hostings. And here you can see Skyfraud forum. And on the year 2016, you can see a huge spike among the countries and the huge range of IP addresses up to 400 IP addresses has been used in particular countries. So we, will, we, we decided to look into this situation. So we zoomed in and we saw that just in one year, over 300 autonomous systems has been used but in our years, it's just a couple of dozens. So, and uh, year 2018 here is not present probably because all the year hosting, uh, this site was hosted in just one autonomous system. And according to the size of the circle, it will, was able to survive for 400 days. But if we zoom in more, we can spot a, fast flux pattern, which was visible not during the year, but just the nine days uh, of September, 2016, where there's 300 autonomous systems has been used by hosting. So what's the pattern of fast flux? So, and how to spot uh, different strategies uh, of hosting. Here's another example on black service shop. And we visualize it uh, hosting several ways. So this is a slide by countries and days active. And uh, this give us some insights, but if you slice over 
autonomous systems, for example, and number of IP used, we can see that uh, in some autonomous systems, criminals able to use just one IP address and survive just several days. In our autonomous systems, we are able to survive quite long time and use it over 20 IP addresses. And if we zoom in, we can spot uh, what assets still have to move around different locations, different, different autonomous systems, and that's pretty often sign of SLA abuse. So to summarize this, um, which criminal hoster is most successful? Su successful? It's uh, hosters which use uh, fast flux, which use virtualization on the backend, and which use sh short term, term rentals and compromised assets. And that all depends on the services or target auditory for which we provide services. As an example is Yali Shanda, who is able to survive very long time by providing bulletproof services based on the fast flux. So, and to su summarize this section, so criminals abuse local laws and regulations. We clearly adjust uh, victims versus geographical locations of hostings and uh, use geopolitical situation between the countries to adjust their services. Of course, we have used uh, SLAs of legitimate infrastructures. We build in infrastructures where asset can survive enough time, enough time to, I would say, commit a crime, but which will be faster when abuse request and so on. So, so the future of underground hosting, we feel that in the future there will be three directions. So the hosting will move into the clouds, hosting will move into new devices like industrial IoT equipment and clouds is because criminals have to formally react to many abuses and move assets from one place to another. And with floods, it's easy to move assets between the countries, between different, uh, between the different uh, hosting regions. For IT equipment, it's really hard to investigate. And the third direction, we feel it will be satellite networks because it's really hard to determine, determine the location of the hosting. And uh, kind of alternative networks. So with this, we are done. Thank you very much. And we are ready to answer your questions. Thank you very much. I think all of the there questions. Is one, one, there, is, there is one question which I would like to elaborate. So uh, there is a question, uh, other countries which are clearly avoided to host infrastructure uh, of bulletproof. So um, it, it was too, the, the answer too long to type, so I'll just say it. Uh, you don't see which countries they tend to avoid to host bulletproof, but you could see it by campaign. They normally try to avoid the countries where the most of the victims are. And the reason for this is uh, if victims are in country A, victims can contact local law enforcement. And if infrastructure is based in the same country where the victim is, it's very easy for the infrastructure to be taken down. So the general strategy that we've seen is to place uh, infrastructure that is being used for a particular criminal campaign in a different geogra geographical location, preferably in a location that doesn't have uh, good ties with the country where the most of the victims are. So for example, if they target United States, they wouldn't be hosting infrastructure in the United States. If they're targeting Russia, the infrastructure would never be in Russia and so on, unless the person is not very professional. Hopefully I answered your question. Cool. Thank you very much both for, for giving this interesting presentation and talk. I think that gives a good insight. Um, and with that, we'll close this session and people now have a few minutes to move on to the next session.
to have a Thank great you. day and see you in the next session.